May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So here we are on this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete Latin for rejoice. We light the rose-colored candle. And as a kid, I was told that in this season of preparation, with its penitential thread running through it, the rose candle signified that we were coming around the bend, not going around the bend, but coming around the bend on our way to being able to celebrate Christmas, rejoice. The historical context for the passage we have this morning from Isaiah is the dashed hopes of some of the exiles who were the earliest to return to Jerusalem or what was left of Jerusalem. What was left of Jerusalem following the exile of Israel and Babylon in the sixth century BCE. All was not as they had imagined and hoped it would be. The prophet Haggai describes the deep disappointment those returning felt after attempts to rebuild the city and the temple had resulted in much lesser versions of their former grandeur and fell far short of what had been built up in people's memories and stories passed down. Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing, the prophet asks? There's a good chance that none of those who returned had ever seen the first temple of Solomon for themselves, since Israel had been in Babylon for at least 50 years. However, those who had seen it had told their children of its wonders and had fostered in them the great desire to return to the holy site and rebuild what Nebuchadnezzar and his troops had destroyed. And I think we all know what it feels like when our visions of how great things used to be feed our expectations of how great they should be again. And those visions and expectations do not match how things actually are. On a more personal scale, we all know the holiday season in any year can stir up a range of emotions and reactions when it comes to memories, expectations, and desires. And especially this year, when so many of the things we have always done, always done our traditions, our gatherings, all that we have done for Christmas, so many of these are just not possible this year. A year when we are grieving the loss of loved ones who have died or loved ones who cannot come home for the holidays this year because they cannot travel in the midst of this pandemic. Or we are feeling the bittersweet pang of remembering Christmas's past spent with various family members, friends, and neighbors over the years. And over these months, we have also seen the growing number of people who are not able to put food on their tables for their families. We have seen the deep divisions in our nation and communities. These divisions and how we view our nation's role in the world and the deep divisions and how we view and respond to matters of justice have become more keenly apparent. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. We hear this in this passage from Isaiah this morning. The command to pursue justice runs throughout the Hebrew scriptures justice. You must pursue justice. The prophets 
had always from the very beginning proclaimed that there is a higher authority than worldly leaders. And that authority is most especially concerned with justice, justice that is grounded in fairness, impartiality, equity of treatment. And no one is free from the demands of justice. Even with the people's return to a temple and a home that was not all that they had imagined and hoped, even with a struggling economy and a lack of a stable infrastructure, the call of justice continues from the 10th century BCE to the fifth and beyond. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Whoever this me is, whether it's the prophet himself or some other unnamed one to come, the call of this person is the same, justice for all people. And we hear the famous lines which follow, describing just what this spirit-filled one is about to do. God has sent me to announce news to the oppressed. This is an announcement of very good news, especially for the oppressed, the captives, the brokenhearted, the prisoners, and all who mourn. And it is not surprising that Luke makes this very passage, the text on which Jesus preaches his very first sermon in his hometown of Nazareth. And not surprising that the, when, the, when the people hear his sermon, they threaten him with death. All prophets who come proclaiming justice risk their lives. And we all have seen that in our own lifetimes. Throughout history and scripture, God calls us to seek justice, especially for those oppressed, captives, brokenhearted, prisoners, and all who mourn. And from times in which we may feel an exile or we may feel out of our depth, our times of dashed expectations or grand memories, God will always bring forth new life. We all have realized that whenever we do come out of the other side of this pandemic, everything will not be returning to how things were in the good old days, will not be returning to doing everything exactly as we used to. And there are some things that we are better off letting go especially after witnessing the murder of George Floyd and the disparities in our healthcare and socioeconomic systems, we simply cannot go back to the way things used to be in our nation and in our communities. As we heard in our lesson from the Gospel of John this morning, John the Baptist came to testify to the light prepare the way for the light of the world. May we too testify to the light and prepare our hearts for the coming of the light of the world. This light who breaks in time and time again and breaks through any darkness. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Amen.